Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to take a look at displacement reactions. These are also sometimes referred to as replacement reactions. So there are two types, as you can see from the pictures there. One is called a single displacement reaction, the other is called a double displacement reaction. So see if you can take a look at those pictures and figure out which might be which one. So let's take a look at our learning goals here. You should be able to identify single displacement and double displacement reactions. You should be able to complete single and double displacement reactions when given all but one of the reactants or products. And you should be able to balance single and double displacement reactions. So let's start off with our single displacement reactions. Here's the picture for a single displacement reaction. Hopefully that was the one that you decided from the title slide. So they take the form A, so a single element, plus BC, a compound, to give you AC, a new compound, plus B, a new element by itself. So if you notice from that reaction, um, A, sorry, A has taken the place of B. So it used to be B that was attached to C, and A was all alone by itself. A has kicked B out of its place, and so A is now bonded with C, and B is all alone by itself. So one element replaces a chemically similar element within a new compound to make a new compound and a new element. And when I say chemically similar, that means a cation could replace a cation, an anion could replace an anion, a metal could replace a metal, a non-metal could replace a non-metal, but they can't replace uh, a cation for an anion, for example. It always has to be the same type. So let's find a hint for identifying these types of reactions. There'll always be one compound and one element on each side of the reaction. And so here's an example, and we can identify this as a single displacement reaction because iron is an element all on its own, and then we have copper 2 sulfide as a compound. And then on the other side, iron has taken the place of copper, it's kicked copper out. So copper is now the lonely element by itself, and we have iron 2 sulfide attached together as the new compound. Let's take a look at our double displacement reactions. They take the form AB, so a compound, plus CD, this is a second compound, and now we're gonna have the B and the D swap places. So A is no longer bonded with B, it's now with D, and C is no longer with D, it's now with B. So B and D have switched places. So an element in a compound displaces a chemically similar element in another compound to produce two new compounds. Again, chemically similar would be two cations, two anions, two metals, two non-metals, but never a metal for a non-metal, for example. So a hint here to identify these types of reactions is that you have two, or sorry, two compounds on each side of the reaction. If there's only one compound, you don't have two, you're not dealing with this uh, double displacement reaction. So you need two compounds on each side. And here's an example, and we can identify this as double displacement because we have uh, barium chloride, so we have one compound, and then sodium sulfate, another compound. Now we can see the chlorine and the sulfate swap places. So the sodium is no longer with sulfate, it's now with chlorine, and the barium is no longer with chlorine, it's now with the sulfate. So how do we predict these types of reactions? Well, I mentioned this already. Cations can switch places with other cations. Anions can switch places with other anions. But cations and anions cannot switch places with each other. Similarly, metals can switch places with other metals. Non-metals can switch places with other non-metals. But a metal and a non-metal cannot switch places with each other. So let's take a look at an example here. This would be a single, well, half of a single displacement reaction. We can see there's one element by itself and then one compound. And so we're actually going to end up with a new element by itself and a new compound. So how would we draw this? Well, to start off, we need to identify which elements are going to be switching spots. Since iron is on its own right now, we know iron is going to come in and either bond with the copper or with the oxygen. So let's take a look. Iron is a metal, which means it can replace another, another metal, but it cannot replace a non-metal. So if we look at our copper 2 oxide, the copper is a metal. 
So that means iron and copper can switch places. So if we write that here, our iron is now going to be with the oxygen and the copper is going to be by itself. So we have um, our balance reaction already. We actually don't need to do any work here. One iron, one iron, one copper, one copper, one oxygen, one oxygen. So now we have a nice balance reaction of a single displacement reaction. Let's take a look at another example. Here we also have a single displacement reaction. We have chlorine, which is a single element by itself, and then we have sodium bromide, a compound. Now on the other half of the reaction, even though it's not written there, we're also going to have a single element, a new one that's by itself, and then another compound. So how do we know which element is going to replace which? Well, chlorine is on its own right now, which means it's going to swap and either add to the sodium or add to the bromine. Which one will it form a compound with? Well, chlorine is a non-metal, which means that it can replace another non-metal. Sodium is a metal, but bromine is a non-metal, which means chlorine is going to replace bromine. So if we write our new compounds here, the sodium is now going to be with the chlorine instead of the bromine, and the bromine is by itself. Now we know bromine is diatomic, so we put Br2. Now that means we need to balance our equation. We have two chlorines on the left, only one on the right, so we'll put a two here. Now we have two sodiums on the right, only one on the left, so we'll put a coefficient here, and two bromines, two bromines, so we're all balanced out. Now, these two reactions that we've just looked at are simplified versions of what a single displacement reaction, or how we can figure out, how we can predict a single displacement reaction. There are actually some very specific rules about the reactivity of different elements and which ones can take the place of other elements. For this course, when I give you half the reaction, it's always going to be a reaction that will actually work. I'll never give you that one that doesn't. However, when you take chemistry next year and the year after, sometimes you'll be given reactions that won't actually work and you need to be able to identify that. So there's a whole list of rules in terms of which elements can uh, displace other elements elements in a single displacement reaction. If you're interested in learning that ahead of next year, I put a video on predicting single displacement reactions and you can watch that one. Let's take a look at a double displacement reaction. We know here that we're dealing with a double displacement reaction because we start off with two compounds and when we write our final answer it will also have two compounds. Even though that's not there yet, we're going to put two compounds on the other side so we have a double displacement reaction. So how do we know which parts swap with each other inside of these compounds? Well, let's start off here. Sodium is a cation. I pick sodium just because it's the first element that I see. So sodium is a cation. I need to find another cation because sodium will swap with another cation. It's cations and cations swap together. Now if I look over here, silver is also a cation. That means that sodium and silver are going to switch places. So now I can write my sodium, and it's going to switch places with silver, which means it takes this new buddy, NO3, as its new anion. Now, sodium has a 1 plus charge, NO3 a 1 negative. If we cross over and do zero sum, we end up with the formula NaNO3 with no new subscripts. And then we'll add that here to our silver, which has a new anion here, chlorine. So AgCl, again, silver has one plus, chlorine one negative. If we cross over or zero sum, we end up with AgCl, no subscripts there. So we can see this one is actually all balanced out as it is. Let's take a look at one more example here. So again, another double displacement reaction because we have two compounds, and we'll end up writing two compounds on the product side as well. So how do we know which elements are going to swap places within this, these compounds? Well, let's start off with the first element that we see, which is the potassium. Potassium is a cation, so that means it's going to swap places with another cation. So that means either the calcium or the chlorine. Well, calcium is a cation, so calcium and potassium are going to switch places. So let's start off with our potassium. Its new partner is going to be the chlorine, so KCl. Potassium has a 1 plus charge, chlorine a 1 negative. If we cross over a zero sum, we end up with KCl as our formula. 
Now we'll put the calcium and its partner over here or its new partner I should say is the SO4. So we're going to end up with CaSO4. Calcium is a 2 plus charge, sulfate is a 2 negative. If we cross over, do zero sum, we end up with one of each. So end up with CaSO4. Let's try and balance this one. We have two potassium on the left, only one on the right. So we'll add a 2 there. We have one sulfate, one sulfate, that one's good. One calcium, one calcium, that one's good. Two chlorine and two chlorine, so that one's good. So this one's all balanced out as well. Now just like the single displacement reactions, there's a whole list of rules for when double displacement reactions will actually occur. In this grade, whenever I give you a double displacement reaction or when I give you the first half and you need to figure out the second half, it will always be a reaction that works. In grade 11 and grade 12, you'll actually learn when those reactions work and when those reactions fail. However, you don't need to learn them for this course. If you are interested, I put up a video on predicting double displacement reactions and you can watch that one. So let's take another look at our learning goals. Can you identify single displacement reactions and double displacement reactions? Can you complete single and double displacement reactions when given all but one reactant or product? And can you balance single displacement and double displacement reactions? If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.